Yes. This is better. Okay, sorry for the delay, guys. We're all ready. applause for my friend, everyone, please. <laughs> so here's, here's the risk of um, going uh, third in a block and not bothering to uh, check your presentations against what all the others, all the others have done. So Richard was first, and he, um, uh, he said about 90% of what, I want, what I'm going to say. But at least he said, look, uh, I'm not going to do any statistics. I said, yay, I have statistics, so I can do something else. And then Alan came along, and he had all these statistics. So what am I going to do now? But I promise you, I still, have, I still have around two slides at the end that may be telling you something new. So please bear with me while I work through the statistics that you've already seen um, and all the th other things that Richard already, already told you. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, data-driven communities. Um, so the U.S. is a huge place. It's 3.7 million square miles. And we have a lot of people, too, but um, we still need a lot more mappers and uh, more communities. And um, I want to talk a little bit about how we're going to do that and, um, and uh, what, what kind of statistics we're going to look at to, um, uh, for guidance. Um, yeah, so this was basically, this is my only graphic that I have. So this, this is inspired by something Skylar did yesterday. Um, uh, if you want to know all about it, ask him. But uh, we're going to talk about how our communities are uh, formed. So here's my, my row of statistics. There's 1.2 million registered uh, OSM users. That's about double what we, have a year, what we had a year ago. And that's a lot of people. Well, we probably know it's, it wouldn't come as news to you when I say that most of these people have never actually mapped anything. They just go on, create an account, and never do stuff. Um, that's not the people that I'm interested in right now, although it's a really big problem for us. Um, I want to look at the people who actually did um, edit. Um, so it turns out that about 27,000 of them, um, or 2.5%, ever edited something in the United States. So that's my area of interest right now. Um, I'm looking at the United States. Um, and that would mean that every mapper covers roughly 140 square miles of territory, which is a lot. Um, and even if, you, even if you discard the um, extremely low population density areas, about one-third of the, of, the, um, of the area of the United States has a population density of less than five uh, mile, uh, people per square mile. Um, it's still, still almost 100 square miles per mapper. It's a lot of ground to cover. Um, in contrast, uh, Germany, with about a quarter of the population size of the United States um, and about a 30 um, 30th of the land, land area um, has 76,000 people uh, mapping there, or ever mapped there. Um, and they only cover 1.8 mile, square miles each. So that's a huge, huge difference. Of course, uh, Germany is much denser. There's much more to map per square mile on average. Uh, we have huge swaths of land that really don't contain anything. But still, the difference is very striking. Um, so going back to the United States mappers, there's about 11,000 of those 27,000, or about 41%, who made fewer than 10 edits. So those are people who yeah, did very little. So those are the people who just come in, do a few things, and then you never see them again. That's, a, that's, quite, a, that's quite a significant percentage. That's our long, a, a big part of our long tail of mappers. And there's 3,800 of them, or about 14%, who only, made, who only ever did one thing. Uh, is there anyone in the room here that is among those 3,800? Can be honest. It's okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, and on top of that, 15,000 have not been active in the last year. So those people have basically gone from the project. Maybe they'll return sometime, but quite likely they won't, um, unless we do stuff to make them come back. So, yeah, looking at those statistics, you can you can you can wave around that number of 1.2 million and be really excited about that and, uh, and say that OSM has all these people. But yeah, this is my conclusion. This is what I have to say about that. Um, you really have to look, look at the people who are actually doing stuff and, and, and seeing how you, can, how, you can, um, how you can make sure that they are happy and have fun. So let's break it down a little more. Uh, I want to define a few different categories of mappers. And Alan kind of did the same thing. I'm, and Richard kind of did the same thing, too. So thanks, guys. Um, I'm going to add to the confusion a little bit more and define a few groups of mappers um, based on my own criteria here. 
Um, the first category is the casual mappers. So those are about 70% of all US mappers. Uh, 19,000 of them, they contributed less than 100 things. And they mostly do so within one month, and then they're gone, and you never see them again. So that's, uh, that's, um, those people are responsible for only a very small amount of the map data that we have, but that's not to say that they're not important, because they, for somehow they logged onto OpenStreetMap, created an account, had something to say, had something to share, some local knowledge that they have, and um, they were ex excited enough about the project to add that local knowledge, and probably no one else in that area bothered to add that local knowledge, so those people are actually really important. Um, so that's, that's definitely not a, a group to discard. Um, so like I said, it's just a really small amount of things, really. I mean, 320,000 20, sounds like a large amount, but it's really on the scale of things, it's, it's, it's only 0.09% of everything we have in terms of points that, uh, things that were ever created in OpenStreetMap in the US. And like I said, this does not mean that they're not important. So another uh, class of mappers that I wanted to talk about and, and, um, and group, group ourselves around in this discussion is the, the, the active mappers. So those are people who are, who are active right now, um, and ha uh, at least in the last three months, and did at least 100 things. Um, edited or created a node way of relation, that's the thing. Um, there are about 1,800 of those only. So. I mean, that's, and that's kind of consistent through time. So if you look at uh, statistics from a year ago, um, we see, you see about the same percentage of mappers who are currently active. So that's a, that's a, that's a really pretty small amount. Um, and um, uh, of people who are currently mapping here in the US. So that's only 7%. Seven, 7 um, and that means we have only one active mapper at the current moment for every 2,100 square miles of of territory here in the US. And that's about the size of the state of Delaware. So to give you a sense of what that means. And if you divide it up by core based statistical area, which is every like town of 10,000 or more people with the surrounding area that people commute to that town from, um, we have two active mappers for each of those if they were distributed equally, which is not probably not true. I didn't look into that, but it's quite likely not true. Um, so. Zooming in a little closer on that group of active mappers, I want to define the term that everybody loves and has been coined a few times in this, in this block already, um, the power mappers. I define it a little differently than uh, probably than Richard, probably than, uh, than Alan. Um, my definition is at least on the screen, so let's, let's, let's look at it a little bit. Um, they map at least a thousand things. Um, they've been active for at least a year, and they have been active also in the last three months. So these are active power mappers that I'm talking about. And we have only 700 of those um, on a population of 310 million and 3.7 square, 3.7 million square miles of territory. They are responsible for about 60% of all United States edits. So they are insanely important if you, th if you look at quantity. Um, but again, also, don't forget the importance of the casual mappers who are responsible not for so much for quantity, but, um, but at least they do a lot of new, they, they do contribute their local information, um, which apparently was, was missed by these power mappers. So they're very complementary. But they're only 2.6% of all the US mappers. And for every almost 5,500 square miles, we have one power mapper in the US. Um, the size of Connecticut. So, yeah, if that's if that sounds if that sounds if that sounds little, um, I think you're right. It is very little. Um, but also, these power mappers I mean they're really really active. So they do a lot of they do a lot of um, they do a lot of mapping, and 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 they 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 make they make make up for their small amount. Doesn't doesn't mean that we don't need more of them. I think we do. Um, and the remaining part of my talk, where I'm actually going to tell you new things. Um, is going to be about maybe some ways that in which in which we can uh, which we can um, uh, which we can which we can nurture those power mappers a little bit better, and that ties in really nicely with some of the things that 
Seyman had to had to say yesterday uh, in the redesign in his redesign talk, and and also the things that Mikel had to say in his um, in his uh, call for a most more social function in OSM. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, I have some li few more statistics to share. Oh yeah, this is fun. Americans versus Germans. Um, so yeah, this is always favorite a favorite of uh, of um, comparing everyone to Germans is a uh, is a fixture of uh, OpenStreetMap conferences, I think. So let's do it here as well. Um, so up, up on top are some general population and land area statistics, and then the, uh, some of the statistics are all of these you, you have actually already seen, except for a few. So 27,000 mappers versus 76,000. Um, about a, a similar percentage of casual, uh, casual, edit, casual contributors. Germany has slightly, a uh, slightly higher percentage of active mappers versus total. Um, the, also, the percentage of power mappers is uh, is um, much significantly higher in uh, Germany, uh, almost five percent versus two point six. Um, I think the, uh, the the amount of data produced by the power mappers in Germany is about the same, though it's also about sixty percent. Um, I'd have to check my statistics, though. Um, oh, it's it's right it's right there on the bottom, actually. Edits by power mappers. Um, I've made an attempt to exclude um, bot and import accounts. Uh, for just based on my knowledge of where these, uh, uh, what these bots and import accounts actually are. Um, so, and the, I think one of the most, more, most compelling statistics here is that the second, the, the one that's uh, um, second, to the, second to the bottom is the edits by the top 10 mappers, um, which in this case includes all the bot and import accounts. Um, in America, uh, in, in uh, the US, it's 70% um, it's just basically um, because of the Tiger import of course, and Germany because there's been no real uh, large-scale imports of any significance. Uh, you see that uh, that the top 10 mappers have are, is, are responsible for only about 9% of the of the map data, or of not current map data. This is ba this is statistics about all the um, uh, data that has ever been on the map. So it's not, not not only the current data. So all the edits that are ever made. So let's step back a little bit and um, look at the time and uh, that do some do some more uh, conclusions before I get to the stuff that's actually new and uh, stop uh, boring you with statistics. So the vast majority of our mappers are casual mappers. This is the long tail of our community. Um, they join, they map some, and they're gone. Uh, most of, most of them forever, um, which is fine. I mean, we we're always going to get we're always going to get a lot of those people, and um, and they're valuable to us. Um, and we just need to make sure that they have a great experience while they're doing it. And I think we're getting there because we have ID, um, we get more and more mobile uh, ways to contribute to OpenStreetMap. Um, we are working on better documentation for newcomers. I mean, it's still very much a work in progress, but those, those casual mappers um, get, a, a be get a better um, onboarding experience. This is a new word I learned yesterday. Um, I think it's great, I love it. Um, so the onboarding experience, I'm going to use it like a pro now, um, is, uh, is getting better and better. And um, I think there's, um, there's still room for improvement, especially in the documentation part of things, but it's going quite well. Um, and so and then there's this very small, small core of power mappers who we sometimes tend to forget about because they're just there. Um, but, uh, and they use, I mean, they mostly use Jossum. They don't need an onboarding experience and they don't need, um, they don't need, um, uh, fancy innovations, they just do their thing, and they, um, they're, um, most of them like to be left alone even. Some of them are, I mean, uh, Richard talked a little bit about who these power mappers are. Some of them, some of them we know, some of them might even be in this room, I'm not one of them, I think. Um, but a lot of them you never see at conferences, you never see at local meetups, you set, never see them uh, online, even at the forums. So these are people who are just doing their work in, pretty much in isolation. You still need to make sure that they have a good uh, mapping experience and they have fun in their way of their way of contributing to OpenStreetMap. Again, I'm I'm coming to that in just a minute. I just want to want to want to um, make a quick comparison with uh, with uh, contribution dynamics in in, uh, in Wikipedia, which is pretty similar. As you see here, that the top one percent of contributors um, is responsible for almost half of the of the contributions. And the top five is responsible for almost three quarters of the, con of the total contributions. And another way of displaying that is this. This is shows very neatly the long tail of contribution uh, in Wikipedia. And again, for OpenStreetMap, this is just pretty similar. Um, but the main difference, of course, is that in OpenStreetMap, we contribute, we 
congregate around places. Um, people are local to a place, they know things about that place and they want to share that knowledge. In Wikipedia, they, contain, uh, contribu uh, they, they, they collaborate on articles. An article with only casual contributors will never be a great article. You'll have, you'll have to have a few power contributors who really have a lot of domain knowledge to structure a complex article in Wikipedia and make sure that all the information that comes in from the casual contributors is, is grouped into, into a coherent, nice article. OpenStreetMap is pretty much the same way. You're, not, you're never going to get a great uh, map with just casual contributors. You also need the power mappers to, um, to, to, uh, to, make the, to, to, to look after the big structural uh, integrity of the map, to maintain the, the root relations, to, uh, to do the more complex things that casual mappers will never get to. So that balance between casual and power mappers is, needs to exist not only on the global statistics like I've shown you, but also on the local level. Every local area needs a power mapper to function very well. And this is my, I mean, this is just what I'm, uh, my opinion. Um, and um, I'm hoping some people will disagree so we can talk about this. But um, I think this is actually pretty important. Uh, so we need strong local communities is what I'm saying. Um, these, that's to, to maintain this balance between power and casual mappers and to have them talk to each other as well. Um, the problem is that geography here in the US is working a little bit against us. Um, mappers are far apart even within local areas, of, in, within metropolitan regions. Um, also, the places to map can be far apart, and I know that's true for where I live. Here in San Francisco, maybe a little bit less, but most cities are not like San Francisco. Most cities are sprawling areas with restaurants and interesting places all over the place, and people get in their cars to get from A to B almost everywhere. So what I want to introduce, and this really ties into, if you've been to, the, to, to, um, to Mikkel's and to uh, Seyman's talk yesterday on the, on the redesign and the social aspects, then this will sound very familiar. Um, I want to introduce the idea of a local dashboard. This would be basically, basically your own OpenStreetMap page that connects local community through data, through statistics, through things that are always up to date, automatically updated, and would use a lot of existing feeds to, um, to, um, to function. So just imagine you're a power mapper and you could see what casual mappers are doing in your area. Um, see how you and your area stack up against neighbors or others. Uh, which, uh, if you get, could get detailed and up-to-date statistics about local data quality, however that is to be defined, because quality is always a little bit of a weird thing to talk about um, because people define it so very differently. Um, what if you could easily reach local mappers with a question or announcement? That's what that local da data dashboard would do. Um, looking at it from the casual mapper perspective, um, there would be a local page that you could make you feel that you're part of a, a live community that includes other people, and not only map data, but also there's real people behind it, and you could see those people who those people are. And you could reach out to them, um, and um, the page would also show me stuff that I could would be uh, that's the most most useful stuff to do in my local area, like tasks that need to be worked on, um, and also contain things, stuff like community events. So um, I did a quick mock-up of how that, what that could look like. Um, I'm a horrible, horrible uh, designer, so this is just um, stuff I threw together uh, that's supposed to show you uh, what it could be and not how it should look. Definitely not how it should look. Um, so there should there should be on the left you could uh, you could look at you could look at um, there should be th stuff that you that you could um, that you could work on. It would it would pull in uh, current map roulette challenges for your uh, for your area. It would pull in um, uh, uh, data about 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 uh, towns and cities that have not seen any edits lately, and you, so you could look at those and see if you have anything to improve. Um, you should, could get a feed of recent change sets in your, uh, in your area. I mean, again, most of this stuff exists. Most of these feeds already exist. They're not just not pulled together in a local, in a local context. Um, local notes, of course. And there could be leaderboards. There could be stuff like um, top mappers in this area this month, uh, most active newbies. Um, and then to the right would be your own statistics. I mean, you could have like some kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm always a little bit torn about badges and, like, um, and achievement. Uh, visible achievements in OpenStreetMap, but you could be a gold mapper or a, a silver mapper or a bronze mapper or a platinum, plat platinum mapper or whatever. Um, and the interesting thing there is you could qualify for data stewardship, and this is something interesting. So this would be like, if you're a top mapper in your area, you would be, you would be approached by this system of local pages, like, okay, you're a top mapper and you've been so for a while. Um, would you be um, a good person that newbies could come and ask questions to? Um, 
And would you, be, uh, would you perhaps want to be responsible for maintaining some root relations in your area? So that stewardship could be really mean a lot of different things. That's very poorly defined yet, but something that I want to think about in this context as well. Uh, messages, local forum could be part of it. A map could even be part of it. Hey, let's get crazy, a map. Um, so some of the elements we've seen, like leaderboards, mapping suggestions, messaging others, uh, your area versus others, and a horrible sense for interface design. Um, so how is this different from stuff that we already have? We have lots of pages that are the group um, people around local, local place, around places. Um, the wiki, um, it's chaotic, it's inconsistent, um, and there's no dynamic local content. So it's, I mean, it's, it's there and it's sometimes useful, but not everywhere. And definitely not for everything that I want to do. Um, there's OWL and who did it, like the feeds of local changes. It's great for that, but it's great for nothing else. Um, and it could be used, of course, for, this, for, the, for these local pages. Forms and mailing lists, um, well, okay to good, I'm saying, I, s I would say horrible to good for messaging, depending on who you are and how you think about mailing lists, um, but again, for nothing else. And there's map roulette and there's keep right for tracking, for looking at errors and things to do in the map. Great for those, but again, for nothing else. So I wanna pull some of that stuff together into one local context for mappers to look at. Um, so we could use some existing services. I've already touched on that, like uh, APIs that are already uh, APIs and fees that are already existing. We definitely have to build more stuff, but this is there is already a foundation of stuff that we can just pull in and use. Um, so here's the big caveat: there's not a single line of code written for this. Um, uh, I have the great ambition to have alpha data dashboards available for every um, state at least by the end of the summer, and um, I want to start talking about this. Uh, ASAP, uh, which is today and tomorrow while we are still together. And I get a sense that there's a lot of energy behind these kinds of thi this, this kind of thing. I'm not saying it should be this. Um, I just really want to get the discussion started because I think it's super important for connecting those power and casual mappers and created, creating those strong local communities. Help is extremely welcome. Uh, so if you feel like you can contribute in any way, um, um, join that discussion, uh, either today, here, and tomorrow while we're still together, or uh, online at this address. So um, I want to thank you for your uh, attention, and I'm happy to answer a few questions. I don't have a lot of time, so, but thanks. Right on. Now, now, now the comment is about for the people who couldn't hear um, is about in as a comparison to Ingress, the, the location game, but it's done by these Google folks. It's a really great example of of, of how you how you start out by yourself. It's it's like hyper local. You can it's, you can just play where you on the where you actually are, and as you move up, you are kind of forced to collaborate because you can't get get beyond a certain point by yourself. And, um, and this would be a really useful analogy for, for OSM and local, local groups that at some point, yeah, you, you get a really strong sense that you need to work together, um, which is currently not very present and, and allows people to just go and map by themselves, which is all, always gonna be the, the case, I guess, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so for, for being forced to seek out the higher level uh, people, yeah. I think it's a useful analogy, yeah. Although, yeah, the discussion on gamification is always a little bit hairy because some people are very, very, very strongly opposed to it. Um, but I think we should have it nonetheless. 
Yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a great, I think it's a great comment. The scale, the scale of these local dashboards, what should that be? States are probably not ideal. I'm just making this up because it seemed easy. Um, it's probably not the right scale. Um, MSAs, like you suggest, are quite likely much better in terms of like the scale. You could even have local, have people define their own polygons for being a local area. I mean, how that's, that's all still pretty much undefined. So we can, we can talk about that. And um, yeah, you're right. States are probably not the right level for this. Um, yeah. Any more? Nitin? Yeah. Free beer, yeah, that's always a good idea. That that it's, pr it's proven to work well. Uh, to get back to your first part, it's um, uh, it's just about the um, the not only it's it's not only about quantity, but what what is the quality of these various what is the quality of, of edits of these various types of mappers, um, and you can discuss what that quality actually means. But uh, the only thing I looked into, which is as I was I was sitting here, um, was actually um, this is this is one example of that, um, which is horribly um, invisible, but um, it says it basically says um, that 46% of um, edits. Let's see. I have, I have it right here. 46. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to repeat that. But for I, in the in the casual mappers, only 46% of the of the stuff they do is creating new things. Uh, while where the whereas the um, the, the, the the power mappers uh, for the for the power mappers that percentage is 81% is creating new things, which is actually, I think, I'm, that's why I didn't show it. Um, I think the statistic might be a little flawed um, because of the query didn't, query is not quite right, but there's definitely some follow-up stuff to, to be done there to look at the actual quality of the edits, what are people doing uh, to identify better what, uh, what power mappers and what casual mappers are doing. So yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a huge amount of follow-up work um, into the, uh, for these statistics uh, that could, be, uh, could give us more insights. I'm really out of time now. I'm gonna hand the floor over to uh, Kathleen. Um, with the last mappers in meat space, right? <laughs>